you set about measuring kindness? Why might you even want to do that? And what might be the problems with it? What would you actually be trying to measure? And uh, where could you look for examples of how other people have addressed these issues? Uh, those are some of the questions that uh, we addressed in a recent report for the Carnegie UK Trust. Um, the report's called uh, Getting the Measure of Kindness. Um, and uh, it's really intended to help organisations to start to think through some of the challenges associated with quantifying what I guess some people might consider to be the unquantifiable. Um, uh, my name's Simon Anderson. I'm a social researcher and criminologist. I'm based in Scotland. And uh, for the last few years, along with Julie Brownlee, I've been uh, exploring uh, the, the idea of kindness. We've, we've uh, written and, and, uh, and talked about it in various settings, including last year's Gathering of Kindness, where we talked about a previous report we'd done with Carnegie. Um, I guess in all of the work that we've done, we've, we've tried to be critical in the sense of unpacking and interrogating uh, the the very idea of kindness and not treating it as something self-evident and taken for granted. Um, but we've also um, tried to be constructive and to, to be engaged with the very real energy and enthusiasm that's evident, I think, in public policy and practice, certainly in Scotland and I think elsewhere, um, uh, it, around ways of making public services less transactional, uh, more human um, and ultimately kinder. Um, so why might you want to measure kindness? Um, well, in part because many organisations have started to use the language of kindness in, in their vision, in their strategy, in their ways of working, in their objectives. Um, and, uh, and inevitably, when organisations are channeling kind of time and, and money and, and staff effort, into prioritizing uh, something, uh, there, is, there is a need to demonstrate that that is time and money and effort well spent. Um, and in, in relation to kindness, that they are walking the walk and not just talking the talk. So in a way, there's a kind of accountability agenda. And, and linked to that, I think there's a sort of improvement and evaluation agenda. Uh, you know, if we are trying to uh, contribute to or create kindness within organizations, um, quite frankly, we need to know what works. And, um, you know, to know what works, we need to be able to establish what difference our actions have made. And we need to be able to measure the thing that ultimately uh, we're trying to uh, impact on. So there clearly are good reasons why you might want to measure kindness. But there are also some reasons why you might not, or at least why you might, uh, or why your attempts to do so might be met with a degree of of suspicion or, or, or cynicism or, or resistance. Um, I, I mean, some of your stakeholders, for example, your, your staff, your service users, uh, maybe some of your external uh, collaborators um, might feel that kindness is, is, is too bland or vague a concept to merit this kind of uh, scrutiny and, and in particular to merit a, a place in your kind of measurement framework. Um, and others might see it as, as just a kind of distraction. <laughs> Sorry, that's my phone going off. Uh, a distraction from um, some of the really big pressing issues of you know, justice and equality and fairness or even efficiency. Um, so so you know you need to keep that in mind and and more generally i think that you need to anticipate uh, a discomfort with the very idea of trying to uh uh quantify uh, these really uh important relational aspects of our lives um you know i think people will have concerns that uh you are perhaps going to end up killing the, the, the goose that lays the golden egg, that, that by trying to, to weigh and measure and count kindness, um, you will effectively distort and undermine the thing that you're trying to achieve in the first place. Um, now, those concerns and the issues that underpin them aren't necessarily intractable, 
I, I think it is possible to show that kindness can complement rather than displace other priorities like equality or justice. Um, and also that measurement is not inherently problematic. And we talk about some of these things in the report. But if you want to stop those issues from becoming intractable with, with your own uh, stakeholders, uh, I think you need to anticipate them and to address them. Um, I think you need to think carefully about how any measures are developed and who's involved in that. Um, you need to think about the limitations of any measures that you do use, end up using, um, and to deploy them sensitively alongside uh, complementing rather than replacing other forms of knowledge. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking there of, for example, the, the, the life stories, uh, qualitative in nature, um, that, that uh, your staff and service users may have. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about the question of definition. I mean, you've probably heard the, the uh, claim that you can't manage what you can't measure. Um, but equally, I think you can't measure what you can't define, um, or at least measurement and definition definitely can't be disentangled. Um, ideally, the first step in measuring anything is to clarify it and to, and to define it, to nail it down, to say this is the, th the thing that we're trying to count. Um, in practice, though, um, it often plays out the other way around. I think in practice, organisations often arrive at particular measures or indicators because those are the ones that are most obviously available to them uh, or uh, uh, the first ones they come across. Uh, and uh, uh, But then the indicator comes to actually define or represent the thing that you were trying to, to look at in the first place. Um, so in other words, to measure, we need to define, but the act of measuring can also reshape our understanding of the thing that we're looking at. Um, and that's especially true when we're dealing with a kind of complex relational concept like kindness, rather than a, a kind of easily identifiable and countable entity, you know, whether that's kind of uh, uh, hospital beds or rates of discharge into the community or, or uh, uh, patient numbers. Uh, so, it's still on this question of, of definition. Um, one of the themes in our, in our work to date has been to remind people that kindness has no single meaning. Um, sometimes it's used to describe um, an individual character trait. You know, people might say, oh, you know, uh, her kindness was her greatest, uh, her greatest strength. Um, on other occasions, it's used to describe a quality that we, we experience in our encounters with one another or with organisations. So uh, people might say, oh, the, you know, the, the nursing staff were so kind in the way that they dealt with my father. Um, or to describe a value that emphasises the importance of the relational in our professional and our personal lives um, or in our encounters with services. Um, I'm sure we've all read, and maybe some, some of you have written those kind of organizational statements saying things like, we aim to treat all of our service users with kindness and compassion. So, so that's kindness as a, as a value, if you like, that structures organizational um, ways of working. But it can also be used to denote a, a more concrete or tangible set of practices, um, by which I mean the things that people actually do for one another or, or that people do for them, both practically and emotionally um, in response to moments of perceived need and critically when there is the option to do nothing. Um, now that last definition is one that Julie and I coined um, in some of our earlier work and, and you may or may not agree with it um, but in a way that's not really the point because the key thing is for you to engage with the question of what you mean by kindness in the specific context of your organisation. Uh, you know, you might want to spend some time um, simply asking who is using the language of kindness within your organisation? Um, uh, in what ways and to what ends? Um, is it, for example, is it being used in place of or uh, alongside uh, other relational concepts like compassion or care? Um, 
is it being used to refer to a, a kind of individual character trait or an organizational value or a set of, of kind of concrete practices? So those are all things that uh, the report kind of encourages uh, encourages organizations to reflect on. Um, and I'm conscious that I don't actually have time to, to run through much more of the content of it, but I do just want to flag um, uh, some of the, uh, a number of kind of key distinctions that we've suggested you might want to think about in developing a measurement strategy that is appropriate to, to, to the uh, definition and understanding of kindness within your organization. Now, the first is the need to think about measures that relate to what people think what people feel and what they do. Um, so in other words, uh, the, the, the cognitive, the effective and the behavioral. Um, so an example of a cognitive measure might be uh, asking people to reflect on or assess the characteristics of their, of their community or their workplace or their service provider. For example, you might give them a statement saying, you know, this is the type of neighborhood where people help each other out. Um, that would be a, a kind of cognitive assessment. An effective measure is about feelings or emotions. So it might be something like, the staff made me feel that they were listening to me. And behavioral measures uh, obviously tap into the, the concrete things that we do for one another or others do for us. Um, so for example, you might have a statement which says, uh, I, have, I have experienced an act of kindness in the last week. So that's the first distinction that we highlight. A second one is, is between what you might call direct and indirect measures. Um, direct measures of kindness might actually use the concept itself. You know, you might ask people, how often do you experience kindness? And this is something that uh, uh, survey researchers and, and others often fall into, uh, taking a, a concept and asking directly about it, even if it's technical or obscure in character, like, I don't know, justice or social capital. Um, but also um, when it may be an everyday term like kindness, which has multiple meanings. So you might want to not only ask about kindness directly, but, but based on your own uh, understandings of, of what, what matters and your definition of it, uh, to break it down and to ask about um, indirect measures. So for example, uh, in the last week, has anyone done any of the following kinds of things for you? Now, there are some potential pitfalls with, with the kind of indirect approach as well, and we, we touch on those in the report, um, but it, it's, it's worth kind of thinking about. And finally, I think it's really worth thinking about a distinction between what you might call kindness as the thing itself, uh, the things that people do for one another and the things that they do for us, uh, or the thing, yeah, sorry. I wasn't very clear, the things we do for other people and the things they do for us. But also the preconditions that, that lead to kindness in the first place uh, and the consequences that flow from it or the things that it makes happen. Um, and, and just analytically, I think it can be quite helpful to separate those things out. Um, so for example, we know that when people have a high level of kind of sense of connection or familiarity with those around them, they're more likely to act in mutually supportive ways. Now that level of connectedness and familiarity is something that you can measure in its own right. Um, equally, we know that when people experience small acts and relationships of kindness, uh, it helps to generate a sense of uh, trust and, and uh, mutual um, connection and belonging. That too can be measured. And in the middle is the thing itself. And that's where you need measures that allow you to, to look at the, the, the things that people do um, uh, for other people and the things that others do for them. Okay, um, I have clearly bitten off far more than I can chew here. And I have talked for far longer than um, the uh, nice people at the Hush Foundation asked me to. So, um, so I will stop here. But I hope I have whetted your appetite for uh, thinking more about this kind of interesting question of whether and how uh, you should set about measuring kindness. Um, please do download the report and have a read and, um, and get in touch if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, have a great gathering. Thank you.